Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hype. This is episode 96. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. He's family at this point in the building. It's really introduce yourself to the audience. What it do, you? What it do? Y'all already know who it is, man. The Fat Freckle Man, aka your favorite coach's favorite coach, one half of the dynamic duo known as Two Kings 215, and co host of the Life Be Life and Podcast. Splash Charles in the building. I told you, my man, Nutmeg Nas in the building again. <laughs> Last time I posted a picture of his niggas was talking about we's twins. Like, so this is the fat, light skin hate. We're not going to the fat, light skin hate. Okay? Every fat, <laughs> light skin nigga, especially if you got a beard, it's me. That's what I'm saying. Why we all got to be little Kevin? Um, <laughs> let's hit the rundown now. How to Hustle Live Show. How to Hustle Live Show. March 12th. Tickets are on sale right now. You can find a poster around the city. You hit the QR code. Get your tickets that way. You can DM me, call me, or you can get the tickets that way. As long as you get them and you is there in the building on the 12th is all we need you to do. If you're looking for sponsors, more sponsors for the show. Shouts out to Simply the Shay uh, Catering. She will be in the building again. You know what I'm saying? Shouts out to my man Nye for plugging that whole situation. She will be in the building with all kinds of treats for you. Cakes, pies, the banana pudding bowl joints. I had the Oreo one last time. It was popping. She just <laughs> sent me these little cinnamon joints. I don't know what they was, but we're definitely copping up. You know what I'm saying? At the show. And Cloud 10 Treats. Cloud 10 Treats will be in the building with all the treats that will get you on Cloud 10. Believe me. Uh, do not eat a whole cookie. That's all I'll tell you. That's off mic situation. I'll let you know about that. Um, but March the 12th, get your tickets now. March the 12th at the barn, 4901 Catherine Street. Show starts at 7, doors is at 6. How to Hustle Live Show. Now, H2H Cleaner, at H2H Cleaner on Instagram only. That is my cleaning company. We do plumbing, roofing, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts, carpeting, and flooring. If you need it done, we can make it happen. Nah, is in the city, but if he makes it worth my while, I will slide. <laughs> um, Custom Hustle World, Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter, Custom Jerseys, Jackets, T-shirts, and sweatsuits. We can get your logo on something. I'm telling you now, it costs more for your logo to go on something. Unless it's a jacket because, you know, that's your situation. The jackets are one of one. You design that whole situation. You can get your logo on the jersey as well. Again, it costs you a little extra to get your logo on stuff. Just letting you know now. Unless you get a jacket because, like I said, unless you go crazy, jackets are what they are. Um... But yeah, you get at me at Custom Hustle World on that situation. We are E Block Radio Network every Monday at two o'clock. GFT Radio Network every Tuesday at two o'clock. Two one six to blend, twelve midnight, eight a.m. eight p.m. Thursday, WTNUphilly.com, twelve thirty. I say podcast radio network at ten thirty. I'm no ten o'clock on Fridays and ten o'clock on the THC Media every Saturday, Sunday. Still wide open, looking to make something happen. Now episode. 96, my man Nas in the building again. Again, I don't know how many times he's been on. I've lost count at this point. But <laughs> I tapped my man because we were in a pinch. And, of course, he answers the bad signal. Now, nah, I know you're ready because you paid talent, baby. You already know it, brother. All right. Is it better to listen to your heart or to your head? Talk to All me, All right, now. so uh, the truth of the matter is it's, 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 neat. it's not one certainty. It depends on what you need. But for me, I say uh, – I'm going to say at least seven times out of ten, it's better to go with your head. Um, your heart uh, your heart can mislead you um, because, you know, how you feel towards something. And sometimes how you feel towards someone, it has nothing to do with logic. It has nothing to do with reason because you could love somebody. You could love somebody, you know what I mean, to death, love them to life, but they done screwed you over a couple of times and – Common sense will tell you not to rock with that person or, you know, logistics, patterns, everything else will tell you that this person ain't ready for what you're trying to get with that person for whatever it is, even on the business tip, even if we ain't talking about relationships, even on the business tip, you know what I'm Hold saying? Up. That's my man. I'm trying to get him on. I love him. That's my man. Whenever people throw out common sense to me, I have to tell them this one thing. Common That's true. Common sense common. ain't common. If common sense was common, it would just be called sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bar. You know That's a you, come, you get those every episode here on the Hot Hustle Podcast. Behind. For um, sure, for sure. 
My bad, though. I stepped on where you go ahead, where you was going. But yeah, no, like uh, like I said, seven out of ten times, you got to go with your head because if you, you know, you're supposed to pay attention, you're supposed to notice patterns, you're supposed to, you know, log data in your head as far as what goes on for what situations and act accordingly. Your heart does not say act accordingly, according to what's real and what's factual. It's according to how you feel. I start laughing instantly because you killed me instantly because this is all the same shit that I was going with. <laughs> you really, listening to your heart will have you in jail in a bad relationship <laughs> with three kids that you never wanted by four chicks that you never wanted to be dealing with. Like, yes, I know what I just said. The math was, the math was there. <laughs> now, she's in, now she's in a whole different lifestyle. Now it's too early. Right. Um, like, you can't listen to your heart. Listening to your heart is like the worst thing that you could ever do because there is no rational thought, like you were saying. Listening to your heart will have you thinking irrationally, will have you going with something that you know is wrong. How many times have you told as a child everything that's good to you ain't good for you? That's, <laughs> that's another bar. I like that. Chick, that's man, true. that chick that you really like, yo, man, I could have ended up with her, but she wasn't the one that was going to be at the table doing that homework with the babies. You know what I'm saying? Just because she was going to get you right doesn't mean that she was right for the situation. Like, so you can't just think with your heart. Thinking with your heart is a bad move, man. Like, people who be like, they wear their heart on their sleeve, like, that's cool as long as you're not just following all of those whims and emotions of your heart. Because, right. like you said, that's my man, though, but this is business. It's not personal. This is what I tell people all the time with all of these different business ventures that I got. At the end of the day, this is never personal. It's always business. Some niggas, I love to death and ain't never bought a ticket to a show and I ain't mad at you. Ain't never bought a jersey. I ain't mad at you. Like, you got a clean out need done and you ain't call me. I'm not mad at you because this is business. You can't take business personal, but if you operate with your heart, then you go, bah, he ain't do this and that. Mm -mm, this ain't got nothing to do with none of that. You follow your head and what makes sense. Maybe he can't afford the tab that you coming at. As I tell people all the time, the price is the price. I mean, niggas that hit you with the, well, damn, that's the homie price. Look, this is business, bro. I can't take care of and manufacturers ain't taking no less for fabrics, materials, and none of that. So when I cut the price, I'm just cutting my own in. <laughs> it's going to still cost me whatever it costs me to get the materials to make whatever it is that you need. Right. But all I'm doing is killing myself at that point. And I can't take care of my family cutting back the price for you because, you know what I'm saying, we got years in. Thanks. And you know what else about following your heart? Like, so I said seven out of ten, even though I really feel like it's eight times out of ten, nine times out of ten. But I said seven it's times 20, out of ten <laughs> because it's only it's only certain situations in which it's it's seldom situations in which you can let your heart make the call. And uh, truth be told, you had to have used your head already. So if it's like one of those thin judgment calls where it's like this person is solid, but maybe. You know, they, they had a bad day or they had a bad game. We all had some kind of falling out. You know what I'm saying? But you choosing to believe in that person. Damn, you know what? I take that back. It's a, it's It's got to be eight, nine times out of ten. Because even if you choose to believe in that person, nine times out of ten, it's because of something that they, they did. How many times you believe in people when they let you down? You know what I'm saying? How That's what I'm saying. Even then, it should be based on what you know about that person. Not what you think or how you feel, but what you know about what that you person. Know. Because how many times you gave somebody the benefit of the doubt? Because that's my man. That's my cousin. And we grew up together. And those situations always, not always, because you can't always go always. That's why you go 80-20. You know what I'm right. saying? Is them situations break the wrong way all the time. Or more times than not, because people look, to take, people look to take advantage because they know your heart be in it. That's how dudes play on your life. They, people throw the loyalty situation out there. You didn't change on me and all of that. If I haven't changed from 19 to 35, then something is wrong, bro. Like, if I'm still maneuvering and acting and doing the same thing if I was doing in 2006, we got issues and we got a problem. Thanks. Nigga, you should have changed too. Like, you got married, divorced, you got kids. Like, we was kids then with no responsibilities. And now it's like, Nigga, you got a whole business, or like I see, you got a wife and an ex-wife and two kids. And you, got, <laughs> like, you need to have changed. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. 
you shouldn't still be trying to run down at the bar and bust something down. Like, so right. you can't like your your heart is a is a your heart is like a bad move because your heart will put you in a bad spot. Now, I will always say this is something like that. I'm recently like uh, I ain't really like the New Year's resolution type dude, but something that you threw out there and I told you I'm gonna give you the answer when I get on with y'all. So I'm not gonna kill the answer. You know what I'm saying I got okay. that. You know what I'm saying? We call that a tease in the business. You know what I'm saying? Pay talent like us knows that type of stuff. You already know. Next, next time I want a life be life and podcast, I'll have an answer for nine. Shout out to Big Mish. <laughs> Shout out to Big Mish. <laughs> Shout out to Ace too. You know what I'm saying? Don't leave Ace out. But of course, A.C.E. always going to get his plug. You know what I'm saying? Funniest nigga in, in uh, Uptown. <laughs> <laughs> Funniest nigga in Uptown. Yeah, so like, it's one of them things is like, if I think it, go with it. I got hurt at work. I send, did I send you that picture of my thumb? No. Oh. All right. So I'm at work and I say, put the glove on. Don't put the glove on. Slice the hell out of my thumb. Mm. And I had nasty drawn too. It's cool now. And that was Christmas. But um, if you think it, go with it. Because if you thought it, the thought that came in your head was the reminder of, hey, when the slime says, don't pass this truck. Don't pass the bus. Don't pass the bus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that time you pass the bus is the time that something's going to happen. The time where you see, like, damn, was that the keys right there? Go pick up them keys, nigga, because you're going to need them joints. So if I think it, go with it. But you cannot, cannot, cannot be like with the, I'm going to follow my heart because my heart is going to lead me. Your heart is going to lead you down the wrong way. Your heart is going to lead you down the path of destruction. Technical difficulties right there, but jump back in now. Nah, tell me this now. Here we go. What is a situation where you followed your heart? <laughs> where it worked out or did where it worked out or didn't work out. All right. Um, it's definitely situations like that. Like there's a um since since you know what I mean, favorite coach is favorite coach, I'm gonna give you one in that situation. So it's a situation where I followed my heart about a kid, right? Most of these kids, you know, they're not supremely talented. If you start from the bottom and trying to pick up a team, you're not going to find the most talented kids. You know what I'm saying? It's really hard. But then you find the kids that, you know, they want to work hard or they want to play hard or you've maybe seen that they could do, you know, one or two things good. So this kid, he could shoot a little bit. You know what I'm saying? He could shoot a little bit. He could dribble a little bit. And I'm like, you know what? I'll pick him up. Since he wanted to play organized ball, he ain't played organized ball yet. I'm going to put him on the bench. So it was two kids, actually. One kid, he could just shoot. Fat little kid, he could just shoot. Other kid, light-skinned kid, he could How shoot. we can always just dribble? Shoot? Fat niggas be having a J. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because most of the time, most of the time, you're going to get that bucket if you're not tall and fat. So if you're short and fat, that's the way to get to buckets. You're not quick enough. You're not athletic. We ain't got the cardio be coming off no screens. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So you got to hit that pull-up. <laughs> <laughs> Big and pop. So, you know what I mean? The little, you know what I mean, little fat guy, He, like I said, he could just shoot. That's really all he could do. His handle's not good, nothing. He don't play defense well, nothing. He just really got a lot of heart, and he want to play. Other kid, like I said, he want to play too. He could dribble, he could shoot. All right, cool. So I decide I'm going to put them both on the bench if they make the tr- cuts and tryouts. So I bring them to the practice. They both work out. The fat kid, he had a really good showing. Um, you know, physically with a lot of the workouts, he was damn near dying. But nonetheless, he put his all out. Other kid, he was mid, but nonetheless. So come game time, fat kid ends up making this shot after somebody cross somebody over and drop him. He like the hero of the game because he made a shot to put us up by three. The other kid who's better than him, Bro, when I tell you he was trash, I mean, stage fright and everything, losing the ball. I had to pull him off the game so his teammates don't swing on him. Damn, youngin. Like, he was that bad that he, he just made bad decisions. He did everything wrong. And it's just it was just a situation where, yeah, like, I went with my heart because these kids from West, I'm living out in this area. I'm overplaying this playground, so I'm trying to just, you know, give some kids a chance. Like, all right, man, I already got dogs and I got killers. I got certified hoopers. Bring a couple of guys along and let them grow up under these guys. 
One, it worked out. The other one, it was terrible. See, the thing in them situations is, because like you said, we ain't dealing with the best of talent right now. So when you ain't dealing with the best of talent, then you just go with who got the passion. Like you said, young boy out there dying, but he out there. See, that was my thing. Uh, I watched Olajuwon out there in the playoffs fast and thought, I could, Olajuwon's faster than hoop, and I could fast and hoop. So we had basketball practice. I'm tongue wagging, but if you still blow this whistle, I'm not, I'm not going to be first. I am saying, I ain't getting any suicides first, coach, but I ain't giving up. You know what I'm saying, I'm going right. to get these joints done. And that was always it. You got to go with whoever got that passion because the, the pressure get on. And then, like you said, now you got three turnovers and you look like you ready shit on yourself. No, young, and we can't have that. And you got the ability. Ability, though, with no heart. That's just like if you use it in, the, in our game. If you got all the great content and you don't promote none of it, then what you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, you can, have, you can have had Kevin Hart on the episode, but if you ain't put it out there, how the hell I know? Exactly. You know what I'm like, how you think anybody was going to listen to that? You can't just go up, another fire episode. It's up. <laughs> Everybody know. It's Tuesday. <laughs> Niggas know I drop on Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? You know that drawing hot. What? what niggas know about? I drop on Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> niggas know I drop on Tuesday. All right, copy, bro. <laughs> you that boy. So yeah, you you gotta follow. You gotta go with whoever got their passion in any of those situations. But in them situations, the reason I would say that that's more your head than your heart is your head is telling you that, and your I did like the work ethic is showing you that you want this and you don't. You know what I'm saying? Because if you just go with your your heart, it'd be like. In my estimation, in this situation, yeah, but he got all the natural ability in the world. But all of the natural ability in the world, no drive and no passion behind it, is just a waste of time and a waste of talent. Um, and it was so much, and that's why I said I went with my heart with the second kid because, like, with the first kid, like how you said, I could relate to him. I've been the no talent kid that didn't have no talent, no skill, no game, but. Whatever you tell me to do, I'm out there doing it harder than everybody and anybody. There's nobody out there working harder than me. So I'm like, you could work with a kid with strong work ethic. He could get something done for you. And the fact that he could shoot. Okay, you could teach him some other things and just let him be a catch and shoot guy. The other kid who technically had better skills, it's not that I knew he didn't have heart, but I knew he wasn't no dog neither. You know what I'm saying? Like I seen him play and he talked with his friends. But when they play other people that they don't know, he don't talk at all. Like, real, real quiet. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, young so you, can't like, even make, you can't even make the cut, bro. We're going to have to tighten you up. You know what I'm saying? The training camp. It's just that team. I work. You know what I'm saying? It's just that I played with uh, one of his homies so often that it was more or less one of those, you know what, man? I'm going to do you a solid because but see, you're such now, a such young and boy. Now we, but and now we going with our heart and saying, that's my man. That's his young boy. I'm going to try to line him when we know that this is the wrong situation. We got to go case by case basis. I, t- I tell people all the time, man, I treat everybody fair, but I don't treat everybody equal. You know what I'm saying? I come with respect for I come with respect with everybody. I talk aggressively. I'm very handsy when I talk. If you meet me in person. You know what I'm saying? Right. But... I ain't never on no, like, malicious or no BS. Like, if I right. like something, I'll tell you. If I don't like it, I'm going to tell you. And, and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People ask me all the time, yo, can I get on? Let me see what you got first. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to discourage you or nothing, but, you know, let me see if this is something I want to tag into. Because people hit me all the time. And I appreciate that because I guess people see that in me. Like, that nigga be going. That nigga be, he be on it. He got the heart, the passion. Right. But, uh... Yeah, like I got I got to see that in you too. You know what I'm saying? You might hear some stuff and be like, mm, "The the structure ain't there, but I can hear the ability." Which is right. the same thing as like you watching a nigga play, like you said, "All right, I see young boy." Like you said, I was the same little fat young boy who had the J and all right, we're going to tell you this, your box out game has to be on a bean. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? One thing I always tell niggas too when you got the young boys, young boy, set a screen. It's one thing nobody's ever expected. Nobody's ever expecting a screen. One back screen kills the whole defense. They not expect it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something that I was going with my heart. 
And that would be just like always trying to do shit for everybody. Yeah. When I can remember I'm sitting at the table, 14 of my friends is in jail. It's 140 pictures on the table, and I'm jumping through. These two niggas is together, so don't send them the same pictures. These three niggas is in the joint together, so don't send them the same pictures. He going to sell his joint, so let's send him these extras. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going through all of that, sitting at the table, and my wife, this is before she my wife, she like, why the fuck are you doing this? And nobody would do this for you. Like, yeah, I see you sending niggas some pictures, but, like, you're you're taking this to the extreme, the way that you're doing it. And I'm like, I just wish somebody, I hope somebody would do this shit for me if I was in that situation. Sure. And the trial and error of life, I ain't been in that situation where I needed a nigga to send me no flicks or nothing, but the trial and error of life has shown me, like, damn, I couldn't get that nigga to do it. <laughs> I couldn't depend on this nigga to do this, that, or whatever for me. And like I said, not even that that was really me going out of my way, but that's me being me, me thinking about the situation. Like I could try to make this the best way that I possibly can for somebody else. Cause that's my man or all of that shit. When it's like, damn, you got to really look at this shit and see, is, is it really like that on both ends? Right. Or is this one way street? I'm saying you look at that text thread. Do you ever get the, yo, you good text? Or are you always sending the, yo, you good text? You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I don't even, man, them, them hearts is dangerous, man. <laughs> I did too much of that when I was young, like a little kid in terms of, uh, you know, hanging out with this person or picking that friend or whatever, whatever. That, that was the age to, you know, move with my heart and make bad decisions. But like after 17, bro, like no, by the time, got- I should say by the time I was 17, no, nah, people kind of wore that out for me. I lie, no, I lie, because the should. girlfriend I had, the girlfriend I had my senior year was definitely going with my heart over my head. But yeah, when you're a young boy, though, like you got the freedom to make those bad decisions. You don't know that they bad decisions fact. until you make them. Then the problem with the adulthood this was one of the other joints that I always throw at people. When you have the burden of knowledge, when you know if I don't pay this electric bill three months in a row that I don't have lights. You know what I'm saying? I like that. You know then, all right, I got to pay this bill. When you're a young boy, you just don't know no better. You know she's trying to let me hit, and that's all I care about. <laughs> she's toxic. She comes from a bad situation. The yams might not have been too clean. You're not worrying about none of that because you're just trying to bust this drink down. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't care that three other niggas hit already. A lot of whole lot of things you're willing to accept as a young, dumb, just because this is, it is what it is at that point. All you're focusing on is, yo, I'm just trying to hit. I fuck about the rest of it. Now, nah, I'm not even saying, worse, I had the cape on, bro. Even worse than oh, just trying to hit, I had the cape on, bro. I had the cape on. Bro, look, was you Hands the on the hips, cape flapping in the wing. Was you the nigga showing up to school with the big ass teddy bear and all of that uh, on your Valentine's Day, John? Nah, but I did get I did get played for Valentine's Day. Though I did get played. I did get played. I'm I didn't still go old life you. on Valentine's Day. I'm I got, married I seven got, years. I, this, I'm married seven years this summer. I'm over life on Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> I got played on that one. Um, this is another joint, man. Shouts out to I, if you're watching the video, E Block Radio Network every Monday. You're know saying two o'clock. Now nah, has on. You know what I'm saying? The Bridging the Gap shirt. Shouts out to those guys. Shouts Shout out to, to the fam. Yeah, man. I always try to lock in those situations and connect the whole situation with the city. Bridge that gap, as those brothers would say. Um, what we got coming up this season with Life Be Life? All right, man. Well, great you asked. We on season two. We started season two, you know, to start the new year. Felt like it was, you know, great timing. Uh, and we started off with a, we doing BMF recaps this season. So at the mm-hmm. beginning of every episode, uh, the uh, show on stars, BMF, you know, for those who know Big Meech and all that kind of stuff, we do a little 15 minute recap of the episode that happened that week. So that's what we do in the season two to start every episode off. But, you know, we got a couple of uh, collabs on deck that's soon to come. A couple of people we're going to try to reach out to. Of course, we got to have Hype back on there, you know what I'm saying? Um, 
we're going to have a little bit more fun in this zone too. Like I feel like the first season we came in with a lot of big life topics and serious stuff, but we're going to have more fun. In fact, the next episode to drop is called what if where we just really come up with like wild life scenarios that we not even in and see how each other plays it out. So y'all did the Jay kiss episode. Copy that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so I love that y'all do like the big, long, the big hard discussion joints. I told you I plagiarize from y'all all the time, and when I do, I like to give you that credit. You know what I'm saying? That episode right. that we did a couple of weeks ago, as we sitting there recording it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's good, good shit, me. I'm gonna write that one down. <laughs> um, so uh, I, as a person who listens. It's nothing wrong with adding, you know, another element because then it gets you into another audience. You know what I'm saying? That expands, that expands your horizons and makes you a broader show. But don't Absolutely. lose the essence of the show doing that. Nah, nah, because it's called like be life. And so we can't, you know what I'm saying? We can't make it all get away stuff that don't have to do with real life. We, we got to, yeah. you know what I mean? That's that's the purpose of the show. That's the feeling of the show. That's the spirit of the show. So you know, and like I always tell people, it's like you go to certain podcasts for the certain thing. If I'm looking for a laugh, I'm gonna go over here. I'm looking for all right. I'm having a problem coming up with some shit. I know now gonna give me something that I didn't expect or didn't look at that angle. So when I know I need something like that, I need a serious joint. I'm coming to you. You know what I'm saying? When I'm looking for all right, let's just have a good time. I can go to BCG. Because I know Face is going to say some off the wall shit. I had a room or something. Many, many, never know. You know what I'm Onk is definitely, if Onk is definitely saying something. If he ain't had a Newport, Onk is going all the way on. Okay. You know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. But um, shout out to Dan, too. Let's not leave Dan. Shout out to Dan, too. Absolutely. Because you know what I'm saying? If you need your political situations, Dan is your guy. My man, That's Smooth, a fact. Was, my man Smooth was on, a situ- on an episode two weeks ago. It was that episode 94. Smooth is another one who I'll go to on that type of time. As we said, I got different strokes for different different things I need. I know where I'm going and where I need to get it from. So that's why I always tell people, like, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not gonna tell you. I don't. All of 97 of these episodes have not been fired, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be the first one to tell you that because if every episode is fired, my bad. You should be hosting on whatever the big station is in your city from right. six to ten. You know what I'm saying? Because you're the perfect guy. A girl or group or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But nah, for real. And you add that element, but still give me my uh serious life joints, man. For sure, for sure, for sure. Now, since we got know, some series coming up for the episode after that, so don't no no worries. We ain't forgetting the formula. We ain't forgetting the sauce. See, that's the paid talent. You know what I'm saying? Little teasers and, and nuggets, breadcrumbs you dropping, my man. <laughs> uh. Since you brought this one up, BMF, what are we expect in this season? And in All fact, right, so have you seen the second episode yet? By the time this comes out, we probably I ain't seen the second episode yet. I gotta watch so I'm ready. I gotta watch so I'm ready. I gotta watch right, so I'm ready for no the recap. All right, no spoilers. Like I said, this will probably be like episode so, five by the time this one dropped, but damn. All right. <laughs> so no spoilers. But you know what I'm saying? What we expect in this season, man, we I, I already expect T. And, and meets to end up back together. It's about how they gonna get that done. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I expect for for me to you know what I'm saying make that whole you know I expect them to make a play on 12th Street, whether it's to either get him off the game, or whether it's to get him on his side, so he got more players to roll with. You know what I'm saying? I'm expecting that too, and I'm expecting some. I feel like you gotta have a boogeyman every season. You had Lamar in season one, so who's gonna be the boogeyman in season two? I'm not sure yet. Like I said, no spoilers, so I ain't gonna say no names. But All right, main man, he main man, he was sliding up wanting to get to work. I don't remember his name. K9. All right, K9. Yeah, K9 might be the ball. That's um, what I'm saying. He see, might be the new see, boogeyman he, for this season. He, he, cause... he down he downed the nigga over a couple of hours at the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to say, I want to give away too much, but he already shown he not he not uh he not for the bullshit. Yeah, he I'm with the playing, aggression. I, yeah, yeah, I'm not playing with you. Um <laughs> This is uh my see, this is a problem that I got with BMF now. Why the fuck would they put out the real story on stars before the season start? Now somebody like me, 
because uh, Jeezy is one of my favorite rappers. Right. And I'm the type of guy, when you start putting shit out there, I got to do homework on you to see, all right, is these just bars or is this real? Is this cap? What's going on here? So when I started looking this shit up years ago, and it was like, oh, these niggas really was getting money. So every BMF doctor had been made known. I didn't see these joints. When right. I was watching the joint, I'm like, damn, I know, know that nigga's name. I remember he was in this joint, and he was, like, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, like that shit is like, you know what I'm saying? It'd be getting your mind going to the wrong places. You'd be like, damn, so he was getting a thousand <laughs> joints. No, damn, okay. just, damn, a thousand joints, huh? And we just, we just blew 600,000 at the club last night. Sounds fun. Yes. Um, little twenty years, I ain't got any sense. Half of niggas ain't even do a whole dub. They did a dime. They did a pound. Listen, you probably can do a pound for a quick two point two. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so I didn't watch all these joints, and now it's like, damn, you waiting for season two? All right, damn. And now y'all gonna give me the whole real story? The documented, the yeah. It's home, and now you like. So, like, we gonna act like niggas was screaming BMF with these big ass chains, and it was '88. <laughs> like, Kareem's still sky hooking on niggas, and right. these niggas, T is going to school doing algebra homework. And we now we going like, is this what we doing? Like, so that kind of killed me for like my damn season two about to start. Cause then it's like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> we we just going to hop all we go skipping all kinds of timelines, huh? Listen, so that's why I didn't even watch the documentary they just dropped on there yet. Because like you said, I watched prior ones. I watched the prior ones that he had Jones on Netflix and all types of places you could find. Yeah, it. Even YouTube, like independent. YouTube days. Yeah, yeah I'm about to say independent filmmakers got them on YouTube. It was a couple of books. Because I remember there was a book about uh, YBM and there was a book about BMF. I read both of those joints cover to cover. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm not unfamiliar with the topic, but those was years ago, so now this came out and it's like, okay, cool. Now everybody's home except Meech. <laughs> like, right. And you look and it's like, yo, oh, that's the niggas right there. Huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. that's why I said I yeah, left they, the documentary they, they, alone they, so I could enjoy it yeah, and they, keep my suspension of disbelief intact. Yeah, man. It's, it, it's like uh, you got Vince McMahon's book so you seen the script from WrestleMania. He kind of killed you now. You know, so you like, you done read the Jonas Hill. So the rock walks out, hits the rock bottom, 10 stone cold, one, two, three. Right. Oh, this is bullshit now. Because now you're like, I don't even need to watch Royal Rumble. That's how I am right now. And I'm over here. Like, <laughs> so now T got algebra homework and a... Uh, and he did it. Yeah, he got the twenty. No, he got the twenty thousand dollar chain. Niggas was yeah, niggas was getting it in when they was kids, but no, you didn't have the big ass BMF on in nah. Detroit in '88 when the Pistons were still <laughs> tough. Like, no, this is not how the timeline went. Barry's still right. in Oklahoma State. You're not over here doing this yet. Like, but you're um, saying the same thing. Yeah, like you killed me with that one, man. But um. Shouts out to my man. I uh, appreciate you coming on. That's episode 96. We're on our way to 100. Got something special for y'all for 100. Uh, Todd Hustle Live Show. Make sure y'all get them tickets. Hit the QR I'm code. See y'all there. The bio. My man now will definitely be in the building. He is an avid supporter of us over here at Todd Hustle Podcast. Wine. And we always appreciate the love. That's episode 96. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.